Okay, our lab today is the one entitled Putting the Force Before the Cart. We're going to be studying how force affects motion. I, I intended to get started on that lecture yesterday, so I'll lecture in class tomorrow. But here we are in lab, our goal is to see that the things I talk about, <laughs> so I'm to see that the things I talk about in lab are actually what occur, or in class are actually what occur. So we're going to study and see how force affects motion. So I'm not writing down what we're studying. If you want to be really you know, specific, what we're studying here is Newton's second law. This is Newton's second law of motion. And I need to put... Do you have a mic that falls in around? Or no. Or do you just hear your quiet voice later on? <laughs> I, well, I do speak fairly loudly when I lecture, but it does get fainter as I go away. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to be fundamentally look at Newton's second law of motion. And you can see we have a whole lot of apparatus we're going to be using today. Yeah, you come up here. That's great. Because I am going to demonstrate how it works. <laughs> oh, hey, look, we have a second student. A third student. I thought you weren't going to be here. You were called. No, it's Annabelle. Oh, it's time. Annabelle. Okay. We, we had to, to go upstairs and be teaching. That's why was we it Amy's late. fault? Yes. And so blame your wife, give her all of it. I will give her, okay, I will not give her the rough side of my tongue because, you know, that doesn't do anything. Is she yelling at you, Mr. Webb? Huh, we don't yell at each other. Hmm? Not having a good day? And I totally forgot my lab book. Can I can we copy the notes or something? Um, yeah. yeah. You can copy mine if you want, Jessica. Well, I, I could just print it out. Oh, okay. But yeah, let's continue on. Did you get my email? Yes. I thought you, yeah. Did or you no, know? no. Yeah. Back. Yes, no, yes, no. I was thinking about Annabelle. But yes, I did. And the homework is up. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It, it wasn't when you sent it, but right. I, I yeah, put it up first thing this morning. Okay, so we're going to be examining this is what i said before you guys got here before amy made you later we're going to be examining how forces affect motion this is a really key point in what we call dynamics dynamics is studying why things move so what we're going to be doing is we are going to have a cart on a track now the first thing you'll have to do and all the steps until you get to part a are setting up the first thing you need to do is make sure the track is level if the track isn't level, well, we know things roll downhill. And so that would be something that would interfere with our experiment. So the book tells you to level the track by taking the cart and pushing a little bit one way and seeing how much it moves. Push it about the same amount the other direction, see how much it moves. And if it moves about the same amount, it's level. Now, mine moved more to your right than it did to your left. And so that means that I would need to raise this side. Now, instead of doing it with the cart, I'm going to give you little ball bearings because those are really easier to see when it's level or not. But still, it's important that you level it. Don't say, ah, it's close enough. Then once you have it leveled, then we're going to actually do the experiment. Now, here's the actual equipment. You can see it here. We have the motion sensors. We used those last week. But last week, you were looking at your bodies. And so you have the little slider on the top set to the stick figure of a person. Now we're going to be looking at carts. So make sure you change that slider to the cart setting. Second thing is Nathan has already slid these onto the end of your track. Make sure that these are in the vertical position so that they will see the cart as it goes up and down the track. Now, after you have it set up, we want to make sure that these actually see the cart appropriately. So to make sure they see the cart appropriately, you're going to open the experiment. Um, yes, Nathan did put out computers for you. He probably didn't start the experiment, though, right? Uh, no, I did not see Nathan starting the experiment. The is it logged in? Okay. I mean, it's open, but it's not actually. Okay, so, yeah, it's logged in. So go to the one that says Science 111 on the... You get an extra ride. Oh, we each have our own? Oh, no, they're... They, they have, yeah. There. 
So this is actually open. Um, close actually this whole thing. So you do first saturation, close this box, and then close it. And then open the science 111. And in there, there's she one that says lab. Uh oh. Well, it's this one, lab zero two, putting the force before the cart. Lab zero two, putting the force before the cart. So we'll look out that. Okay, yeah. And don't be impatient. It might take 10 seconds to five minutes to open up. That is a long time. 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, five minutes is much longer. So you got to be patient. Okay, so I have mine set up here. <clears throat> and so when it opens up, you should have a display like this. It'll show a graph with time on this axis, position on this axis. But you know what yours is going to have? Well, it's going to look something like this. You see what just happened? No. I got a little yield sign with an exclamation mark here. Does yours have that? No. Is the power on to your little sensor or the thing in front of Josie? Yeah. Oh, okay. That that's that's what made made that thing come on because it wasn't talking. So when I turned the power on. Are you recording this? Yeah. Oh, okay. So when I turned the power on, you see it took a little while, but now that's gone away. So that's something to be aware of. You gotta make sure that this is powered up and that your sensors are connected. Huh? Yeah. yeah. We actually have this one. Yeah. That, that actually, well, I like that better. It's just not what I have. I wonder what, well, I probably updated yours and not mine. Because it is useful, I think, to see acceleration and velocity. What is velocity? No. It's what? No. Constant speed no. and direction. Okay, constant motion is constant velocity, which is constant speed and direction. So velocity is speed and direction. So you have, you have the idea. Velocity is speed and direction. What is speed? Like how fast something's going. Okay, how fast is accurate? But in physics terminology, it's the change of position divided by the change in time. That's what how fast something's going means. So you have a position graph, and then you have the speed graph which is how quickly the position is changing. So it's good to see how the speed graph compares to the position graph because they're tied to each other. And then what's acceleration? The force. Yes. It's not the force. It's affected by the force. That's an yeah, important part of today's lab. Acceleration? The speed at which the object is moving. Okay. We have to use rate instead of speed. It's the rate at which the speed is changing. So acceleration has to do with the changing speed. So there is a fixed relationship between those three graphs. So yes, yours is different. Yours has more information on it. This is the only graph that the lab guy tells you to analyze, but it's good to see all three of them. Catch it before it hits. Thank you. So. Assuming that I have leveled my track, remember I didn't level my track. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to collect data to make sure that it sees my cart right. So down in the lower right hand corner, can you see the thing that's lighting up here? Yeah. There's the record button. I press the record button. You hear it ticking, just like you did last class break. Oh. Now I'm going to make it come this way, stop it, and make it go this way. Stop it. And I look here and I'm like, oh, perfect. I had not a glitch. You know what that is to have no glitches? Rare. <laughs> if yours is like that, you're like, it's perfect. You might have a few glitches. If you have um, glitches, try to make sure this is level. That's the most likely cause of a problem. So this was just making sure that it works. Once we made sure it works, we're ready to do the experiment. But we have to get some string on here. So get yourself a bunch of string. You don't have one. It's right here in my hand. Oh, I thought you were having us do this part. Okay. Well, I'm going to, but you have to take this out. Now I need to cut this. How do you cut the string? 
Terry. Terry. <laughs> this is really, really lame, so it's really easy to tear. Now comes the hard part. Y'all have to do this when your kids and your mom is teaching you how to sew, right? Yeah. I hated that, by the way. In theory, I could sew. Practice, I don't want to. Okay. So the cart, this is your cart. It has a little place to tie on it. I have done this backward because sometimes I don't think clearly. You want to put, yeah, how much do you get? A couple yards. Where's the top? The what? The area where you Okay, right here on top. Put it first through the big hole on top, and then let it come out the much bigger hole in front. I have gone the other way, going through the much bigger hole, and then trying to go through the small hole. And that's really a pain. Not bad enough as it is. Because I got it in there, but I have no curvature, and it's not coming out. So you need to tie it in there. So, I, we're all working on that, right? Technically. Vanessa is, Josie is, and I, there's only two groups, so. Okay, I'm so frustrated. I am cheating. I am grabbing one of my paper clips. Where is the rest of the typing? Bending it open. And pulling it out with the paper clip. Woohoo, paper clip for the win. What? Okay, the other side. Oh, I see. So it goes up and through that hole, yes. right here. <laughs> just like, just like mine is now. I got you. So mine is tied up. Woo oh, yeah. Okay. So once you have that tied on, then you put it on the track and make the string go over the pulley wheel. And then you have to break the string off for the right length. Right now, your string should be too long. And so I'm going to make my string so when that is pretty much, let's say, at 20 centimeters from the end, my string is broken off just below the pulley. So that's how I set my actual string length. And yeah, okay, so that's maybe three yards. Two yards still would have been fine, just would have been a little bit different length. Now I'll just put a loop at the end that's here. And even though I grew up and our church was poor and couldn't afford to have pathfinders, I can make this much of a knot. Are you So I have a loop at this end. And then comes the redneck solution. Tape. Duct tape. Not duct tape in this case, but the paper clip. Oh. Gonna put a paper clip on there and just pull out the end. That paper clip is gonna be my weight holder. So how are we doing? Just you're gonna too fast for my capabilities. Well no, that's fine, that's fine. It's not that small hole, so it's not so difficult. Oh, is this the uh, first? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't because I get frustrated with this all the time. Is there another this Alright. Um, oh, I didn't like it. Okay. So then we put the paper clip on the end? Yeah, so, so now, now pull it. No, don't put it on the end. Okay, so pull it so it's reasonable. Yeah. And, and then just, just break it. So I'm breaking it. And I don't put it on the end. Oh. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, you want to the other one? So, so it's just going all the way through now? It's not the counter. Okay. And we're just tying paper clip. Okay. So now just brace off about here. Yeah, you said it was just about the paper clip. And tie a loop. And then you get a paper clip. You want us to tie the paper clip or make a loop? Make a loop and make a paper clip on the loop. 
it's a lot easier than trying to do it in, in one step. So, as for the rotation, the graph, what I was taking over, how is that? I guess you put that together. Oh, just kidding. So, I'm going to add it for a bit. The little wires coming out, which isn't held in all the time. I sort of read those in the bowl, but it's scary. So, so you're not going to do it like this. Okay, so you have yours. Like that? I want to make sure it looks right. Yeah. I mean, what's wrong, right? And then it's this out. So. You'd be surprised if she's not. Okay, then you need to have eight washers. Your guide says four nuts. For purposes. I do have eight today. For our purposes, two washers is one nut. So here's eight washers for each group. And last thing we're going to do is. So bend this out so you can hang longer on it. So for the four head nuts, we're doing eight washers. Right. We're, we're going to use two or four washers when it says two nuts and eight washers when it says four nuts. Okay, so now we have everything ready to do an experiment. Now this here was just making sure that it saw my cart everywhere. So you still need to do that and also you still need to level the track. Just, you know, move your car to the side when you level the track. Um, Nate, can, can you find the ball bearings and bring them out? They should be in the top right corner of the cabinet back there. Cabinet back there. The washer. Or not washer, excuse me, ball bearings. Okay. Now I'm ready to take data. So you remember from last class period, how do I get rid of this data that I did here to test? Anyone? We were testing in what? We, which is fine. We're in physics lab. Testing is good. How do I get rid of this data? Okay, I'm just going to click there. Boom, it's gone. Now I'm ready to do a real experiment. Now this is why you have two people in your group. Go ahead. I grabbed washers for me, and I ended up giving them all to you. So I need my set of washers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to leave four washers in the top of my cart. And I'm going to put four washers on this hook. Now, as I said, it works best with two people. I'm going to have to do this with, well, come here, Nate. You're my lab partner after all. Look what I just did. You broke here. I pulled my thing through. Fortunately, that actually probably makes it easier to get it in here. Here's one for us. <laughs> oh, we're not going to worry about leveling ours. Okay, hold the cart so it doesn't move. Okay. So just put. Now I told Nathan to hold the cart so it doesn't move. Notice what Nathan's doing. Can you see what Nathan's doing? He is holding it with his finger in front of it. He's just pressing his finger down. Oh, by the way, do what Josie did. Take your bar and just put it like this in front of the, the pulley. <laughs> or, or it could have been Alex. Been <laughs> Alex and Josie. So it doesn't destroy everything. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't hit the end. Nathan's holding down with his finger. If you push down, you'll hold it in place real easy. Now, I'm going to start it. And Nathan doesn't have to let go the instant I start it, but for the second one, I want Nathan to be reproducible. So I'm going to have him wait until we're like at the two-second mark on data and then let it start just so we have a time to aim for next time as well. Should I be playing watches on the end of my experiment? Well, not yet because you're not doing the experiment yet. You're, you're, okay, so I start my data. When it gets to two seconds on the graph, Nathan's going to let her rip. Now, as soon as the paper clip hit the ground, my experiment was over. It doesn't matter that I let it run longer. My experiment was over at that point. So my data, the only reasonable data is going from two seconds 
out here to six seconds. Everything after that doesn't matter. So I have my first graph and you have some questions or one question. No, I think it's two questions to answer. I'm not going to answer those questions for you, obviously. But what I am going to do is now go on to the second actual experiment. Except for, I don't want to show you what the second exact actual experiment is going to look like. Well, I will. You have to do your own anyway. So I took the other four, Nate, I need to hold this in. I took the other four washers, and so I'm going to put all eight washers. Make sure that your string is on the pulley, because it will probably come off the pulley. So now I'm going to have all eight of my washers on here. And I'm just going to repeat. So once again, Nathan's going to wait two seconds after I start before he releases it. Ready, Nate? Okay, so there I have my data for the two trials. So one of us is essentially just Why do you start again? What was that? One of us is essentially just hitting the stop and record back. That is right, and the other one's releasing. Now, here's something that we did not do last lab period. We should have done this, but I forgot. So I need you to pay attention because you're not going to figure this out if you don't listen. It's not written in the lab guide. You need to pay attention. First thing I'm going to do is rescale the data so only the data that's pertinent is in my picture. So all the stuff before two seconds, immaterial. All the stuff after it flattens out, immaterial. So to do that, one of the first things you can do is click this button up here in the top left. Can you see where my cursor is? If I click that button, it auto scales the data. That's almost what I need. Now, what difference does it mean this one here and this one here don't start at the same position? What does that mean? Not faster. Think about what we did last class period. No. We just did start the same place. So be better than Nathan and I were. Pay attention. Put your finger like, if you put your finger on the 180 mark both times, you'll start the same position, and then you won't have that offset. And then we're looking at these, and you have to compare these. Now I have extra time before and after the experiment. So see that little hand? When you have the hand, that allows you to move your graph however you like. And so I'm going to move the graph over to the left. So it starts when Nathan actually released the cart, not when I started collecting data. And then I come down a little below, and you see we've got this little thing with left, right arrow. That changes the scale on the axis. So I'm going to click and drag to the right. And that's the last step, yes. So now I'm going to take a screenshot. So to take a screenshot, this thing up here, you see what I have highlighted up there? Take journal snapshot. Right, it's supposed to look like a camera. I don't see it, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Now there are three options there. You want to make sure you know which one you're doing. The entire workbook page will have extra things. So we don't want that. The workbook page content would be everything that is that is from here, from this border to this border. And then the bottom one, the um, workbook page display, would be just the graph. Well, fundamentally, the, the bottom two are going to be the same. So you could choose either one, but make sure it's not the top one. And then click on the camera. And I can tell it didn't work because it will flash up a picture of what it took. So I just missed. There you see, now I took it. Where's that picture and how do I access it, you ask? Files. Good question. No, not files. It's not saved anywhere yet. If I come right next to it, that's the journal. That's where the picture went. So if I click on the journal, apparently I double clicked. I don't know how. Here it is over here. So there's the picture. Now I can take this picture and I can do things like, say, um four washers versus eight 
washers, a title telling me what's going on. And whoops, don't hit return. And you can, um, you know, that, that's where it is. We are going to save this eventually, but we're going to do two graphs and we want to actually save them as one file. So I have the first one done. I'm ready to go on to the next part. So now that I'm ready to go on to the next part, I'm going to close the journal, close the journal, delete all of my data. And the next part is saying, now what's going to happen if we use the same mass hanging down here to accelerate? Shoot. The mass that's hanging, the washers that are hanging, is the force that's pulling it. So when I went from four washers to eight washers, I doubled the force. Now I'm going to stay with eight washers, which of course requires I pick all these up that I just knocked on the ground. And we're going to double the mass of the cart instead. So we're going to take our first piece of data. And so Nate, I need your help again. So he's going to hold this back here. Note where he's holding it. And I'm going to hang all of my washers on here. So basically, the end one is the same thing, except we're taking all the washers and putting them on the paper now. The, well, how many other washers they tell us? The second one and the third one are actually the same thing. And then the fourth one is going to be putting this bar on there. So we're going to do this again. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do the last one now because the third one is the same as the second. So I put this bar in here, so I'm pulling roughly twice as much weight. By the way, note in your lab guide, step, what is it? Step 10 says determine the mass of your cart and record it here. Just put 500 G, 500 grams. It's not exactly the mass, but it's the nominal mass. That is, so it's the name of the mass. Yes, I'm going to catch it. I'm going to put this a little earlier to try to catch it earlier because it has more mass. If it has more mass, that means it has more inertia, which means it's going to be harder to stop. So the last trial, once again, he's just going to wait. Now, my time scale is... <laughs> Here with the two and a half? So, no, we'll, we'll just start two again. So we wait until two because we want to be able to repeat the time of start. And so you're once again going to have two trials, scale those two trials, take a snapshot, and then I, I will come to you. I want to make sure I finish this. Um, after you have taken your second, second snapshot, so I'm going to take a second snapshot now. Um, you want to see what Daniel needs. Tell him in class, but I can help him in about 10 minutes. Um, I took an extra snapshot. What do I do if I took an extra snapshot? What do you think? Okay, delete it. So I'm going to choose the one I don't want and up here, delete it. This one here, I'm going to put a name on it. Um, nice. yeah, that, that was real nice. My name is going to be kind of maybe because I didn't do it right. Clearly I didn't scale it. I only have one graph on there. It's not what we need, right? So that's why I named it that. So now, and this part can be devastatingly problematic. You might actually want to just save your experiment at this point because sometimes it will crash. So I'm going to file, save experiment as, and just save it on the desktop. You can't save it where you got it from. And the, or you can put it in documents. There's probably a lot of stuff in documents that I've never checked. And so this is going to be junk. That's what I name everything. See, I have desktop jump folder there. So I saved it so those pictures will be saved in case, in case it crashes on the next step. Now I come over here to print. And I'm going to print it as Microsoft PDF. And I want to just do pages one and two, print. And now it asks me to give it a name and this will be graphs for lab two. I ran it as one run on word, who cares? Now I've saved them as PDFs, then go to Moodle and upload and you only need to do it for one of you. You don't both need to upload it.
If I upload it to the lab on Moodle. Then you just want us to write both names on there? Um, I, I'll know who the partners are, so it's not a problem. Okay. Answer the questions and you'll be done at that point. 